A uh, very good morning to you all, dear brethren, and uh, good evening to some of the brethren all around the world. Greetings of peace and joy in the name of our Almighty God and our returned and uh, reigning King, our Lord uh, Jesus Christ. I also bring the loving greetings of all the dear brethren here in India and especially from Bangalore. Mangalore, Goa, Mysore, Umsur, Damangere, and various uh, other places. I thank our Lord for giving me <clears throat> the opportunity to serve his flock and also the Convention Committee brethren for giving me an opportunity to serve the brethren. As we are approaching the year end, <clears throat> Let us uh, revive our consecration vow and study something which is useful for our spiritual growth so that we may correct ourselves in the coming year. So today we are going to study a topic, uh, Nine Precious Stones Covering uh, Lucifer. So details of which is given to us in book of Ezekiel chapter 28. Generally, we choose good examples and study from the Bible. But today, for a change, we are going to choose a bad example and learn if there is any good lesson from these bad examples given in the Bible. Because the Bible tells in 2 Timothy, 3rd chapter, <clears throat> 16 and 17, that the Holy Scriptures are given to make us wise unto salvation, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. If this is the case, then surely there must be some good lesson even in the bad examples given in the Bible. Therefore, today, let us study one bad example. Who is the cause for all evil? The devil himself. Can anything be learned from Satan? Yes, surely we can learn a lot of lessons or else God would not have recorded this for us in the Bible. In the book of Ezekiel, chapter 28, verses 11 to 19, we read about Lucifer, how he was, and what made him to sin, and its consequences, and his final destruction. So let us all turn our Bibles to Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 11 and verse 12. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation unto the king of Tyrus, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, Though sealest up the sum, full of wisdom, and perfect in beauty, Lucifer was created perfect, up to the mark, lacking nothing. Therefore, his fall cannot be accounted to God. Lucifer was perfect in beauty. And what does the beauty mean in the Bible? In the Bible, beauty means character. So what was the beauty of character which Lucifer had? It is given to us in Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 13. Though as been in Eden, the garden of God, every precious stone was thy covering, the sardis, 
topaz diamond the beryl the onyx and the jasper the sapphire the emerald and the carbuncle and gold the workmanship of the tablets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day the dough was created he was covered and uh, decorated with all these uh, precious stones dear brethren how many stones are there did you observe it there are totally nine stones in india these nine stones are called as navratna therefore today we see many people here in india the way that the navratna ring which is one of the trademark of uh, setan so what does the this uh, stone uh, represent e stone has a particular quality and a particular meaning and e stone represents one of the beautiful characters it is because of this that people wear these lucky stones or gems like diamond or emerald thinking that it is going to help them prosper that it would bring them blessings therefore what is the meaning of the nine stones let us look into these stones individually and see what does it mean dear brethren the first stone is sardes sardes is a red stone in olden days they used to use this stone to heal wound similarly mankind was wounded by sin and its result death god gave his only begotten son to heal this wound of death this shows the depth of god's love therefore bible says that god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son to save us john third chapter verse 16 therefore this sardi stone represents god's love lucifer when originally created he had this primary quality in him which was the most and which is the most important of all the characters to dwell among the angels and in the presence of god first corinthians 13 13 the greatest of all is love dear brethren the second stone is topaz topaz means seek when rubbed vigorously this stone generates electrostatic charges this portrays the transmission capability of the power and grace of the holy spirit therefore this stone represents grace a sense of consideration a disposition to kindness and compassion to others he who was one of the morning stars surely must have been full of grace compassion and kindness towards other angels in his walk and speech dear brethren the third stone is diamond the word diamond here seems to be a wrong translation actually it should be rock crystal which is also a type of diamond because of its uh, fixed vibrating frequency this stone is used in communication equipments similarly this represents a special class of communicators or coordinators lucifer was one such communicator of god's message therefore in the bible angels are sometimes called as messengers of god and lucifer was one of them in ezekiel 28:14 it says the dove was upon the holy mountain of god that is heaven dove has walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire 
the various stars of the universe as god's messenger dear brethren the fourth stone is beryl what does the uh, beryl uh, symbolize in ezekiel chapter 1 verse 10 and verse uh, 15 and 16 we read that uh, they were four faced living creatures having wheels which touch the ground the earth and the color of these wheels was like unto a beryl that is read in ezekiel uh, was uh, 10 15 16 now as i beheld the living creatures behold one wheel upon the other by the living creatures with his four faces the appearance of the wheels and their works was like unto the color of a beryl these four faces of a cherub represents the four attributes of god we know it very well it means love power justice and wisdom this cherub had a wheel touching the earth now what are these wheels these wheels means cycles the epochs the dispensation in the god's divine plan of the ages this divine plan of the ages and the cycles in this divine plan reveals the four important attributes of god to the people on this earth it shows the height depth length and breadth of god's wisdom therefore beryl in the bible represents wisdom of god and how was lucifer created ezekiel 28 12 it says lucifer was full in wisdom dear brethren the fifth stone is onyx the name onyx is a traditional name nowadays it is called as sardonyx a fine quality sardonyx has actually three layers a top uh, red layer and a black base and a white middle layer so what does black represent in the bible black in the bible represents trials tribulations persecutions now why does god allow tribulations in our life it is to develop patience and to remain humble romans 5 chapter 3 verse therefore black symbolizes humbleness white as we all know it represents the purity and the red as we all know it symbolizes blood and death dear brethren all these three stones together represents the quality to remain humble and holy till death the perfectly created lucifer was created with the ability to remain and maintain humbleness and holiness till the end but which he failed to maintain the sixth stone is jasper in revelation 43 god is compared to a jasper he that sat upon the throne was to look upon like a jasper which means perfection dear brethren god uh, says and jesus says in matthew 5:48 be you therefore perfect even as your father which is in heaven is perfect our god is like a jasper means perfection be you like your father which is in heaven who is perfect similarly lucifer was created perfect ezekiel 28:15 dear brethren the seventh stone is a sapphire it is a fine blue stone and uh, blue in the bible as we all know represents faithfulness faithfulness of god in that he gives rain 
and sunshine to all, both to the good and the evil. Matthew 5th chapter verse 45. Therefore, this blue stone represents faithfulness towards the Almighty God. Lucifer is called as son of the morning in Isaiah 14, 12. What is the meaning of this son of the morning? Who is this morning? If you see, Jesus is called as the morning star. And Lucifer is called as a son of this morning star. What is the meaning of this one? How is Lucifer the son of Jesus? It means Lucifer is the first creation of our Lord Jesus Christ. As we see in the Bible, Jesus is called the only begotten of the Father, the Son of God. What does it mean? It means Jesus is the one and the only direct creation of God. Rest all things were created through Jesus, to him and for him. Similarly, the first creation of Jesus was Lucifer. Therefore, he is called the son of this morning star. What does it mean? Dear brethren, since the day Lucifer was created, he remained faithful to God until he sinned. Dear brethren, approximately how many years was Lucifer faithful to God? Just think about this one. Approximately, we can calculate. Dear brethren, we know the creative weeks God created for six days and rested on the seventh day. Each creative day is a period of 7,000 years. So 7,000 years into six creative days would give us 42,000 years, which means Lucifer was faithful to God at least for a period of 42,000 years. And Lucifer had this quality in him. The eighth stone is emerald. Dear brethren, emerald is a green color stone. And green in the Bible represents everlasting life. The life of mankind is now compared to a grass which stays fresh in the morning and withers away in the evening. But the life of mankind in the thousand years is compared to a tree. Dear brethren, we can compare this from Isaiah 65, 22 and Isaiah 40, verse 7. Therefore, emerald represents everlasting life. Lucifer, when created, had everlasting life. If he wished, he and if he had not sinned, he could have lived forever, everlastingly. But uh, he sinned and lost his everlasting life. The ninth and the final stone, dear brethren, is called as carbuncle. The stone is also called as chalcedony. It is found hidden in the copper mines. This when put to a, to a terrific heat and cut and polished, it gives out a real beauty. Similarly, when we are chosen out of the copper mines, the human condition and put to refine as fire of fiery trials, what is that we should show? We should show perfect submission towards God. Then only can God mold us and cut us properly that we may shine as beautiful gems. Therefore, this stone represents submission to God. Lucifer was initially submissive to God. When he was told to be an anointed cherub that covered a guardian angel for mankind, he was obedient to God. Ezekiel 28, 14. Therefore, dear brethren, Lucifer was covered with all these four, nine precious stones. What are this one? Let us just summarize these points. Sardis represents love. Topaz represents grace and kindness. 
diamond represents the messenger of God. Beryl, the wisdom. Sardonyx, humble and holy. Jasper, perfection. Sapphire, faithfulness. Emerald, everlasting life. Carbuncle, submission. Lucifer was completely filled with all these qualities and was perfect in his ways. Then why did he sin against God? What was his sin? What did he do? That is given to us in Ezekiel chapter 28, verses 15 to 17. Till iniquity was found in thee. What was that iniquity that was found in Lucifer? In verse 16, he says, By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Verse 17, thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. The sin of Lucifer was pride in his heart. Dear brethren, this was an abomination in God's sight. Proverbs 16.5 Even before Satan expressed it outwardly, it was in his heart. But outwardly, he would pretend to be good. Though none knew his thoughts, God knew his heart and very thoughts. Therefore, God arranged a situation in which he could be tested. Where he can really express his inner intentions. Dear brethren, then God created man who was much lower than the angels and gave the whole dominion of the earth to them. They were created with a special capacity to reproduce their own type of species, which was a wonder in the whole universe because such a power was never given to any creation. Even the angels did not have. After giving the dominion of the whole earth, God commanded Adam to eat freely of the fruit of any tree in the garden of Eden except the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And attached a penalty to this saying, in the day you eat the fruit thereof, you shall surely die. This was a very strange thing to all the angels because they had never heard about such a law. There was no such a law among the angels. Neither any penalty called as death. It was the first time that they heard the penalty called death. It is upon this lower creation that God appointed Lucifer to be a watchman. Lucifer being a morning star Next to Jesus and above all angels could not humble himself to such a level as to be servant of one lower than him. It was like telling a manager of a company to be a watchman. Similarly, Lucifer could not humble himself to such a low level and began to misunderstand God's purpose in this and began to think Jesus is already walking in the Garden of Eden and Adam and Eve are recognizing him as their God and master, but me merely as a security guard, a watchman of their house, a shelter giving cherub for this Eden. So all the respect and honor is going to Logos and none to me. Moreover, today, I am a watchman for one pair. If their children are born, then I will be a watchman over many. And if these come to know of my early status, that I was once a morning star above angels, next to Jesus, it will be a shame and insult. And uh, everybody will talk about me. It will be a still greater insult before the angels. And none would respect me. With these kind of evil thoughts, Satan began to fill himself with violence. And this went to his head. It is then 
that he decided as mentioned in isaiah 14 chapter verses uh, 13 and 14 that i will ascend into heaven i will exalt my throne above the stars of god i will sit also upon the mount of congregation in the sides of the north i will ascend above the heights of the clouds i will be like the most high thinking what god has done is not proper therefore by my great wisdom i will show to all the angels even to god himself how to rule properly how to set up a kingdom and to whom to appoint for what purpose if only i was in control i would prove myself to god and to all the angels how wise i am inspired by these thoughts satan decided somehow to bring adam and eve into his control so that he could be the king over the earth instead of them and as the proverb goes pride makes uh, someone the blind lucifer became so blinded that he went about fulfilling his plans by telling a lie to adam and eve that they would not die because he himself had never seen death and knew nothing of its true meaning this is how he sinned and this sin began to multiply day after day dear brethren this uh, began to multiply one upon the other one upon the other therefore in ezekiel 28 verse 18 it tells that by the multitude of thine iniquities by the iniquity of thy traffic all these civil things began to come up one upon the other first in thoughts next in words first a lie then it was manifested in action by deceiving you thus iniquity began to multiply add an increase this traffic this communication this to and fro business of exchanging thoughts negative thoughts about god it began to increase day by day day by day every sin it did he would see and look towards god what god would do but god did nothing and yet all his powers remained the same this gave him an added boost oh then i can sin more and he again increased continued to increase this uh, evil activities and sin therefore what would god do <clears throat> ezekiel verse uh, 18 he continues to say therefore god would bring a fire from himself that would destroy him and i will bring thee to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all them that behold thee god decided to fire his ambition but did not punish him immediately so that one day his unquenchable desire for power and ambition would consume him and destroy him like a fire this verse dear brethren also suggest that uh, satan would be manifest in the flesh in the future this is a suggestion mostly this may take place in a little season when satan is let loose again during which he will be given an opportunity to manifest in the flesh probably satan had done this one sometime before jesus uh, gives us a clue in matthew 12:24 saying uh, the prince of uh, the devil belzebub probably mostly he would have manifested sometime and uh, there might be some record regarding this one also and once he is manifest in the flesh during the little season he shall be locked in this human nature and never allowed to return back as he was once locked from manifesting and uh, 
remanifesting in the flesh during the flood at the end of the first world. Similarly, this might again happen in the little season. You would be locked in the human nature. And in this nature, God would destroy him in front of everybody. Why? So that everybody can come to know that it was him. It was this one, the creation of God, who had created such a havoc in this earth. Therefore, in verse 18, it says, God would bring a fire from himself that would destroy him. And he says, I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all men that behold thee. I said, dear brethren, why? Because nobody should say after a thousand years that Satan was a myth. So God would definitely prove to mankind that Satan existed as a Brother Russell says, the hidden body of Christ will be shown to the whole world during the thousand years. That holiness and sinless body will be shown to the whole world. And, and uh, this will be an added boost for the mankind to prove faithfulness and to remain faithful to God. Therefore, dear brethren, <coughs> Ezekiel 28 verse 17 continues to say that I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. Who are these kings? The whole world by the end of thousand years will be kings of this earth. They shall all behold the destruction of Satan as an example of how pride will destroy anybody. So they may never allow such thoughts in their minds. His destruction would be made a spectacle to all, even as Christ and church are made a spectacle to the world and the angels now. Dear brethren, Ezekiel 28:19, it tells, All they that know thee among people shall be astonished at thee. They shall be surprised. They shall be shocked because such a wonderful cherub with all these wonderful characters just because of one pride, he ruined all the blessings of God. And everybody will detest his pride as a poison. Though shall be a terror of second death and never shall though be anymore. Dear brethren, Satan is compared to precious stones. But is there anybody who is uh, compared to precious stones in the Bible? Yes. You're all right. The church is also compared to the precious stones in the Bible. Revelation 21, 19. It says, the foundations of the wall of city were garnished with all manner of uh, precious stones. The city in the, is the New Jerusalem, the lakh and 44,000, the little flock, the invisible church. Verse 2. It is compared to a city because City in the Bible represents religious government. Therefore, even Babylon is compared to a city in Revelation 18.10. And who was the one who showed this city to John? It is one of the seven angels as mentioned in Revelation 21.9. And who is this angel? It is the same angel who showed to John about who Babylon is in Revelation 17, 7. And uh, this angel is none other than Brother Charles Taze Russell. The seventh angel who showed to the whole world, especially the consecrated class, that all the nominal churches are part of the great antichrist system, turned by God as Babylon because of the confused doctrines. And it is the same Brother Russell who is now showing the church he was the one to tell about the fact of the little flock that it consists one lakh forty four thousand the spiritual Israel and the character of the bride 
and the qualification necessary to be part of the bright class. How did he show it to the John class? Are the feet class saints? The character and the qualification of the bride? It is by carrying to a great high mountain. Revelation 21, 9 and 10. If we need to understand the character of the bride, we need to leave the earthly condition. Go up high in our spiritual standards. Enter into the kingdom class. The high mountain. Only such are able to understand the character and qualities of the bride properly. And what are the qualities and character of the bride? It is given in verse 19 and 20. There it is compared to 12 precious stones. Jasper, Sapphire, Chalcedony, Emerald, Sardonyx, Sardis, Chrysolite, Beryl, Topaz, Chrysophysis, Jacinth and Amethyst. And it was upon the foundation of this city that these stones were decorated. This foundation, as we all know, is none other than Jesus Christ and secondarily the apostles. Upon which every man buildeth of gold, silver, precious stones, food, hay or stubble, whose work shall be tested by fire. You can compare 1 Corinthians 3rd chapter verses 11 to 13 and Revelation 21, 14. Dear brethren, now what are the qualities the church should have? What are the qualities which we should have if we need to qualify of the divine nature? If we need to partake of the same nature which the bright morning star is having. What are the 12 qualities which we need to have, dear brethren? It's very much important. We need to understand this one, dear brethren. The first stone, huh? just recollect. Uh, the first one is Jasper uh, in Revelation. I'm taking the order in the Revelation. See, the order is different, but the stones' names are almost similar. You can compare it later. Jasper represents perfection. This stone sometimes is found with spots of brown. But if correctly cut, it can be removed from the stone. Similarly, this church, in spite of imperfections, ultimately will qualify the membership of the Lord's jewel. Second stone is sapphire. Sapphire is a blue stone and blue represents faithfulness until and unless the church is faithful unto death, they can never be part of the little flock. The third stone is chalcedony. This stone represents submission. This is found hidden in the copper mines. When heated and cut and polished, gives out its beauty. Similarly, a church is a treasure hidden in the earth and vessel. When put to fiery trials, polished, chiseled properly, they prove the submission to God. The fourth stone is emerald. This represents the everlasting life. The everlasting life promised to the church is a life from divine nature where there is no possibility of death. The irreversible nature. The nature only which Almighty God was having and later was given to our Lord Jesus Christ. Who only hath immortality, whom no man has seen nor can see. The same immortal nature God is desiring to share with us. The fifth stone is Sardonyx, which represents to remain holy and humble till our death. The sixth stone is Sardis, the love, the greatest of all. The seventh is Chrysolite. It is a golden greenish yellow color stone. In olden days, they used to use this stone to cure diseases in eyes. And what does eyes mean in the Bible? Eyes represents understanding. You see, dear brethren, it represents understanding. When Adam and Eve ate 
the forbidden fruit the bible tells that the eyes were opened does it mean that they were blind before no it is the eyes of understanding that was opened therefore this stone represents understanding understanding of god's will although satan was created perfect he lacked nothing yet all the qualities he lacked this one thing the quality to recognize god's will in giving him such a humbling experience but the church are having this wonderful quality that nothing in their life is a surprise and all things are permitted of the lord even the very hairs of the head are been numbered the very sparrows of the sky don't fall to the ground without the father's permission god's will therefore all things are permitted for their good this understanding church should have to be joined as with christ how much ever we beg god would not give us the things which would cause us harm though it is seemingly very good in our sight and whatever is good for us though huh eh, we would never want he would never withhold it such infinite and unerring is his wisdom this important quality to understand god's will the church should have to be part of the little flock the eighth stone dear brethren is beryl beryl represents wisdom therefore the little flock in the bible is compared to the wise virgins the ninth stone is topaz topaz means grace church should have the grace of the holy spirit the ability to attract the truth seekers through kindness and compassion they should be full of grace in words and actions the tenth stone is christ of us it is a green gem stone the name means hardness and as the name suggest it is known for hardness next to the diamond similarly one of the greatest quality of a good soldier of cross is to endure hardness of the trials and be more than conquerors though satan had the nine qualities full him he did not have the quality to endure hardness therefore when god put him to test he could not endure and failed in the test dear brethren we need to endure hardness as good soldiers of christ to please our captain of salvation the 11th stone is jacinth jacinth means uh, to in latin uh, the meaning comes to turn around the sun this jewel gives uh, intense red orange and uh, this uh, sometimes is also called as uh, fire opal this represents uh, <clears throat> who are emotionally and strong defenders of faith of the ones delivered to the saints and the 12th stone is uh, amethyst it is a violet stone a violet stone it was used as an antidote for drinking in olden days it is believed that a wine drunk out of the cup of an amethyst would not intoxicate but had the ability to purify it similarly the church who are going to rule with christ for a thousand years should have the capability to purify cleanse others of the sin and help them to overcome their weakness as a merciful high priest satan did not have this quality in him instead of cleansing others he got himself defiled and began to defile the whole host of the angels therefore in ezekiel 28:18 he says thou hast defiled thy sanctuary by the multitudes of thy iniquity therefore dear brethren the church should have these 12 qualities what are they jasper perfection sapphire faithfulness chalcedony submission emerald everlasting life sardonyx humble and holy till death sardis love chrysolite understanding the will of god beryl wisdom topaz grace and kindness chrysophesus endure the hardness 11th jacinth 
defenders of the faith, the last Amethyst capability to purify, cleanse others of their sin. Lucifer, even after having all these uh, nine qualities, fell because of uh, pride. Similarly, dear brethren, the church, even after having all these qualities, 12 qualities might fall because of pride. If Satan could fall even after God proclaiming him as perfect in beauty and full of wisdom, who was faithful for a period of 42,000 years, how can we escape this trap of pride without God's grace? The true children of God are now on trial for an everlasting life and everlasting death, dear brethren. And all of the temptation, the sin of spiritual pride is one of the most dangerous. In proportion, pride comes in, the spirit of the Lord departs and spirituality ceases. Spiritual sickness comes into and leads to second death because the Lord Resist the proud, but giveth grace to the humble. James 4, chapter verse 6. Therefore, Apostle Paul, Peter said in 2 Peter 5, 6, humble yourself. Therefore, under the mighty hand of God, and also our Lord said in Matthew 23, 12, he that exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. Therefore, there are 10 things that pride does. It would cheat us of God's blessings. Lord would chastise us to drop the pride in us. This might be permitting an humbling, beast-like experience to that of Nebuchadnezzar. This might lead us to second death. Pride is a noose to hang oneself. Moses the meekest of all, because of one mistake and the only one he did, he could not enter Canaan. Why? Because of pride. Numbers 12, chapter verse 3. Similarly, if we persist, we would go to second death. It would magnify our present experiences. It is easily offended. If not called for prayer or if somebody does not recognize us, we feel bad because pride expects us that we should be great and recognized by all. What were we before we came to the truth? Nothing. Then why expect to be something here? If God recognizes us, that is sufficient. King Saul felt the same. That all recognized David, but not in him because of pride. It leads us to madness and do awful things. Saul began to throw javelin on David and later sought a witch to know the future. Will make us lose small opportunity to serve the Lord and look only for big opportunities. It is the worst prison. It would create a lot of trouble. It will be a barrier between us and God. Dear brethren, let us finish this one with just a few more points. God initially created the stone Lucifer, then tested him. It was like an artificial diamond, not durable, but a cheap one and less attractive. Therefore, God has decided to first prepare the diamond in a natural way. By intense pressure and heat, which is thoroughly tested and durable, more expensive and more attractive. The jewel are now in course for the future position. Therefore, God intends us to learn lessons by way of these stones. It is of the earth's common elements that the stones are made. Similarly, Lord jewels are made of common human society, the poor, though there are many elements in the earth's crust only few become gems. That too as a result of excessive heat, high pressure and slow cooling. Similarly, among those 
many called only the few become the chosen class and still few become the gem the lord's jewel class it is as a result of fiery trials the pressure of the circumstances and only if you are rightly exercised by these trials thus they are made fit in the golden sockets of divine nature but in christ you have added beauty by bearing trials like misunderstanding reproaches etc therefore let us rightly be exercise of the trials and pray that uh, we may be of the jewel class dear brethren <clears throat> though we have missed uh, a lot of opportunities in uh, 2021 at least uh, let us try to be faithful in the coming year god has promised us to give yet one more year to prove our faithfulness to him 2022 dear brethren let us not lose this opportunity let us humble ourselves in the mighty hand of god that he may lift us in due time may the lord add his blessings to the understanding of his uh, holy words i once again thank my heavenly father the lord and savior jesus christ for this opportunity and the convention committee for giving me the opportunity to serve his flock if anybody has got uh, any questions they can uh, definitely ask me i'll be sending the notes via the chat and my whatsapp number and the email id is there thank you god bless everybody till we meet again amen thank you very much bro thank you very much bro. i'm glad you forgot um, the certificate